If I remember, we had a small problem going. We can just knock that off real quick. All right, we had that pulley, pulley problem that we started. Anybody finish that one? No, you did? Yeah, that's why you're my favorite too. Oh, I, I can't say that was my favorite. So, we had, uh, we had a couple pulleys and uh, helped maybe line up a little bit. And then we had uh, another, another pulley there and another one there. And then the ropes went from that one up and over to that one. And then there's another rope. I'll make it a different color just because it's an awful pretty way to set up pulleys. And that's the one you're pulling on, and together they're trying to lift some mass there. Right? And that's the one we we set up. Uh, actually, you're just trying to hold it. Remember, this is a statics class. But you can do this problem as if you're lifting it at uh, constant acceleration, uh, uh, zero acceleration, constant velocity. So uh, it takes a little bit to get things going, but then once it's going, it'll be the same as if just holding it. So we had, we had, remember we're taking into account the mass of all the pulleys and trying to find the, uh, the tension in the line, if I remember. So we started with pulley C. Remember why? Is that's what huh? Is that's what yeah, well we're trying to find the tension in this line and that's the first place it acts. So if you can get it there, you might be done. Sometimes you don't have to do the entire problem. Uh, you can do just enough to get it done. So, two, uh, remember, ropes only pull, and they pull with uh, whatever the tension in the line is. So, since we're taking into account the weight of the pulleys, we also have that. So we know that this, this upper cord has got to be, uh, what, 2T plus mg. Otherwise, we don't have equilibrium, and that's the only thing we've got going in this class is equilibrium. So then what? Because that doesn't answer. We still have T as an unknown in there. I mean, the, the, this is not one equation, one unknown. This, this, we got that from setting it equal to those two, so we've used the one equation we have there. So do what? Pulley. Pulley. Uh, well, you, you can follow where the rope goes and see if we can do that, or you can follow that cord over because either one's got T in it. So, since Alan spoke up first, we'll do uh, pulley B. Let's see, that, that was C. This is B. And that, we'd have to get there eventually anyway because that's where uh, our mass lives. What's the downward force on that pulley? MA. Uh, good. We're, remember, we're looking for MA, but don't forget it's got mass itself. So that would be actually M for the pulley, MA for the mass, and then G would be the total weight down on that pulley. Don't forget that. Um, and then we have a force up in that line. What is that? force. Do we know? That's the same line that comes over here. That's just T. And then it's the same line that goes out the other side. So is that it? It could be in equilibrium. The, the, not knowing the magnitudes of these things, we got up forces and down forces. So there's a possibility it could be in equilibrium. But not if we're not done. Is there any other force on there? The pink string. Code. Yeah, the, the, the string here. Maybe I should have put those in blue, but forces I tend to put in yellow, uh, in pink. Um, and that is 
How big? Two T plus one G. That's this chord going on over. So we do know, well, we sort of know that. It's the two T plus M G. And remember what we're trying, we're trying to solve for the tension in the line as a function of the mass being lifted. So is that enough to do it there? Enough to finish it there? Can we get T as a function of MA? Well, we can we can write it. We can say, see if we're done. Um, we've got actually four T up. plus mg, and m plus ma g down. Is that right? And we're taking m, the mass of the pulleys, to be known. So, yeah, we can get t as a function of ma there. And so that would be sufficient. We don't need to go up to pulley d to finish it. If you did, if you did go up to pulley D, you're adding another unknown there, so uh, it can complicate things. But if you go over to pulley B, there's no new unknowns, and it's another uh, another equation, another independent equation. And that's how you did it, Alan. Uh, sort of. Sort of. I, I isolated pulley B and the force in the middle. And I wrote as. Uh, mg plus mag minus 2t, and then I just set that equal to 2t plus mg. So okay. it ends up being the same thing. Yeah, algebraically the same thing. Just did it in a slightly different order. So. Okay. We're ready to go 3D. Okay, get your little. Oh, PJ, you have your 3D glasses. You can put them on now. Did you have a question? Here. Um, wouldn't you have to double the mass of the pulley when you're figuring out that how the force? Or no, that can't slow down that much. What, here? Yeah, because you have two pulleys on the same string, wouldn't that be where your M plus MAG is? Oh no, never mind. Never mind. No, because that's a, a cable we've already got. Yeah. So we already, we already know something about it. All right, let's go. 3D, it's... Uh, only a uh, a step in uh, drawing complication a little bit, um, just because we are limited to drawing in three D two D space these three D problems. So we just have to be careful with them. But nothing else comes in terms of the tools we've got, other than will have the possibility of as many as six equations and therefore we could handle as many as six unknowns. Um, we won't typically do problems that big, certainly not on a test, because that's just too much to do. You go through a system of six equations, six unknowns. Though if you're taking linear algebra, you're learning about that deal anyway. All right, so let's, let's set up a problem. And carefully drawn 3D space. So I've got an origin there. And at the origin, I have a, a, a pole is anchored by one of those uh, ball and socket type joints. It's exactly what your hip and your shoulder are. It's a, it's a ball end that fits into a socket. So it can, it, it can turn in any direction, but there's no uh, no moment caused by that uh, by that kind of load. It's, a, it's a, uh, essentially a, a sort of a free free moving socket. So to make it easy, what we'll do is we'll draw a little cube just to help us set the three D space that we got to draw. There, so I have a little 3D cube, so what we're going to do is put uh, the strut that is anchored at the origin 
diagonally across that 3D cube. So. We have a, a strut there that uh, we need to hold as if it's a, you know, part of a, a tent pole or something that we need to anchor. Alright, so dimensions of our little cube in millimeters. That size 400, this size 1000, so not quite to scale, uh, but it's 3D, so what do you want? Okay, so our cube is 400 by 600 by 1000. Does that help draw in that little box first to, to imagine things? I would think so. Helps me. And if it helps me, it helps you. That's what I decided. Okay, let's uh, put a little bit more here in. The uh, bar itself that goes from the origin across to there, well, I labeled these A and B. So the bar that goes from A to B has a 200 Newton weight. Mostly, often we take these to be massless, uh, unless otherwise specified. So here's a case where it's got a weight of uh, 200 newtons. Point A is a ball and socket, and then it's held up by two cords. One that's attached to that wall right along the, the box, and another's attached to that wall. So we'll label those points D. And C. Okay? So those points, just a, a, just a stiff cable attached right to the wall. Fair enough? Everybody got the picture okay? You can imagine if you want that this is, this is the room. We've got the cable, the bar going from one corner up to the other opposite corner. And then to hold the bar there, we've got a cable that runs along the two ceiling corners um, at the top of the wall. So, same thing that we drew there. And we want to find the cable, the, uh, the tension in the, the two lines, and the reaction forces. Remember the, we call those reaction forces because the weight of the bar and the tension in the cables is causing forces at whatever supporting it A, and so in reaction, those are exerting forces back on the bar itself. And remember, at A, it's a ball and socket joint. All right, want to find the forces. You can imagine we're going to sum the forces. If that's sufficient, we're done. If not, we're going to have to sum the moments. But uh, pretty good place to start is sum the forces. To do that, what do we need? Free body diagram. Free body diagram. Of what? The block. Not the block. Remember the, the block is is the, the bar. The bar. Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh. Do you want me to listen? Alright, so there's the bar. Tried to make it uh, about the same angle it is. This is kind of going to be a three-dimensional picture. We just got to uh, sort of do the best we can with it. We've got these two cables holding up that end, so those are those are both going to pull, and so uh, kind of goes in that direction off to C. Maybe we'll just label that one TC. Is that what I called it? So I don't get screwed up. T, T, B, C. From B to C. Then there's another one pulls over to D. So we'll call that T, B. 
BD. That one goes over to D. Look about right. What else? Other forces? Ball and socket. Yeah, the, the, the anchor down here exerts some kind of forces. What are you doing, Fiona? I mean, Miss Smith? <clears throat> yeah, is, is the ball and socket joint in that table? It allows, it allows that joint to freely turn. You know, so if we had wind loads or something, or while we're putting this up, we need to adjust those cables a little bit. We don't want it to snap off at A, so we allow it to freely turn at A. Is it there? To go a little farther, I think there's another table for 3D loads. Is that it? Well, that's those are exercises. Yeah. Well, I think it's still the same chapter. We don't switch chapters here, do we? No, it should be in section 3 4. Okay. It is. And since you're the only one with the book, I'll have to put it up on the picture thing here. Yeah, right here. Okay, it's got it there, if I may. Alright, same type of table that we had in the earlier section. It's just this one has uh, three-dimensional three dimensional choices here. And so I'll really zoom in on the, the ball and socket joint. And it's just simply named as it is. It's just a ball on one end of the bar that fits in a socket so that it can go essentially any direction, which is exactly what your shoulder and uh, hip uh, sockets are. So it's got, uh, then across from it, a little picture of the reaction forces we put in instead. All right, so we have one in each direction. Uh, that's the x direction. It's only one force actually, but we we draw it in its component form because it's just a lot easier to do the summations. And then the so we have AX, AY, and AZ there. Just like drawn, just take them right out of the, that little table there. And uh, now we've got them. body diagram free of other things like the wall so uh, it's only forces on the object as the subject of the free body diagram itself which is the bar so there are other forces in the problem of course and as a designer you might be just as concerned with how to attach it to the wall but uh, for this part of the problem all we're looking for is the tension in the cables and the two reaction forces so we 
you can then start to look at the forces. We just keep going until I have enough equations and enough unknowns. So let's see, forces in the x direction. Be, uh, and they happen to both be going in the same direction. So pretty, pretty good hint right there. I drew one of them wrong because all the left face, all the minus x direction forces equal all the plus direction. There aren't any plus x direction forces as I drew it. So that just tells me that most likely I drew this wrong. Maybe I would have wanted it in the plus x direction, is it? But I happen to draw it that way. It'll just give us a minus sign just to tell us we did it in the wrong direction. Because this can't do anything else. But here, we just guessed wrong. You can either go back and change it, just erase the arrowhead, put it on the other side, We'll move the arrow over so it's pushing in the plus x direction. Or just leave it and go along with it as it is. Either way, you're going to still get the same, same result. So we'll leave it. Forces in the y direction. Let's see, that's up and down. What do we have? A, so we're done with that one. We, we, we did actually get then part of it. How many unknowns do we have? I mean, start, we just knocked off one. How many do we have left? We don't know the two cable forces. We don't know the three of those, except we just got one of them. So we still, we still need at least three more equations. More if any more unknowns come into it. Three-dimensional problem, so we might have some z-component stuff going on. Uh, what do we got? z-direction, that's this upper line here, is parallel to the z-direction, so that's TBC, so that's in the minus z-direction, must equal anything in the plus z-direction, but kind of did the same thing with AZ that we did with AX, so those both are in the same direction, so my recommendation just go with the picture. Um, we know the tensions are in the right direction. We know those are going to be positive. So that'll put a negative sign on AZ and AX. Just means we've pushed them in the wrong direction. Uh, is that it? Because sooner or later you're okay and you can start solving the problem. You've got enough equations, enough unknowns. Well, we had five unknowns anyway, the two tensions, the three reaction forces. We've got one of the reaction forces, so not only does that not count as an unknown, but this doesn't count as an equation anymore, because we've used it now. We can't use it again, other than if we had a y in there somewhere, we'd put it in because we know the value now. So we still need to keep going. What do we do? We've got to sum the moments. That's all we can do. All right, so sum the moments. It's a 3D problem, so we're not going to just sum the moments in the Z direction. We're going to have a full 3D problem. And those moments must sum to zero. Uh, about which point? Any suggestions? Any restrictions about what we choose? You choose anywhere. So choose somewhere to your advantage. 
if there is such a spot. There might not be, but there might be. Y point A? Well, gets rid of two unknowns because one's not unknown anymore. So I, I guess A or B would be the same. Both of them have two forces going through there. We don't know and we need to find both of those. Um, but we'll do A. It is a little bit easier anyway just because A is at the origin. So all things are going to match up a little bit better. I guess if we do that. So uh, any of the reaction forces at A go through the origin so they don't play into the, uh, the moment equation. So what does? And how do we set it up? Are the tensions causing any moment about point A? Of course, any force that doesn't go through point A does. So we've got both of those. So let's see. Let's do R. AB. Would that make sense? Cross with the two TBC. So that's the moment caused by the cable that goes to B to C, the moment about point A. And if we can get these vectors, we can just do the cross products when we get ready. Uh, others? Yeah, same, same thing. R. For BD, it'd be R. Remember, we use anything that locates that force. Uh, and that's what the AB did for us. It just went to the line of action of that first force. Why not use the same one? We're going to have to get it anyway. Why not get it and use it twice if we have it? And that will <coughs> take care of the second one. Um, and you know we 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 still gonna have to come up with these. Let's see. I need some board space. Oh, I just want to keep it all. <laughs> what should I erase? All the next two courses. This? Got much space in them, right? Could you go here with it? Okay. Well, what what we what we we got? Are we done with the sum of the moments? No, because we didn't say equal zero. We had to say that sometime. But what else? Sort of, it's going to be to halfway. Yeah, it's to halfway. So we can do this. One half RAB. We're going to have RAB anyway. Why? All we have to do is cut it in half. Uh, cross with uh, uh, the weight, weight of the bar, as a vector. Anything else? I think that's it. So equals zero. We got all the parts there. Okay, so we need each of the vectors for the cross products. RAB. Where does it stop? It goes in the direction A to B, 
but just how long is it actually? Because if we can, if we can see that vector, we can actually put its components together. We'll have the whole thing, huh? It goes from A towards B, but how far? Didn't I just say? All I don't know. Components? You mumble a lot, so we don't always listen to you. <laughs> And you don't always listen to me either, so we're, it's even. Dan, what did he say? The vector RAB goes from A all the way to B. It locates the forces, the line of action of the forces with respect to the origin. It is that vector A to B. So it uh, goes plus one meter in the I. We use meters, it just makes the numbers a little bit smaller. We're going to be multiplying a bunch of stuff together. So we have plus one in the I. In the J, 0.6, 0.6J. And then plus 0.4K. And that's meters. So I'll just squeeze that in there a little bit. What else? We need we need B C. What's it look like? Yeah, it has no component in the x direction because it's parallel actually to the z axis. So, what in the y direction? It has no component in the x direction. No component in the y direction, does it? It's parallel to the z axis, so it's only going to have a z component. So it's in the minus z direction, because it's going off that way. Its magnitude No, remember we're looking for its magnitude. We know its direction. We need its magnitude. That's the thing we need. So this will be minus k half TBC, minus TBCK. Is that right? Pretty simple, no, no uh, X or Y components to it. And RAB, we've already got TBD. To be determined. What? You write it now. I'm tired. Rough weekend. To create a couple papers. TBD is parallel to the x axis. Back goes in the minus x direction. T B I hat. J component? Zero. X uh, K component? Also zero. It's parallel to the x axis, so it's not going to have any components in the other direction. And uh, one half R A B, we'll just put a one half in front. And W. is uh, the minus 200 J, minus 200 meters J. Okay, so I'm going to erase the middle, the main drawing here, because we, we really need the free body diagram. And we've got that. So now it's just a matter of doing 
three cross products. Except we can make it just a little bit easier with a little bit of cross product algebra. We have a common term in each one of them. We can pull that common term out. So this can then become, let's see, RAB cross with whatever's left over as just the forces. TBC plus TBD plus uh, one half, let's see, how's that going to work? Uh, TBC, might be easier to just leave that one in. Uh, T, B, B. Oh no, the one half, the one half distributes, or doesn't distribute, but it, what's that called? Commutes. So we can make it just the one half W. Because that's like having a hundred newtons all the way out, or two hundred newtons halfway out. Same thing either way. So that way, all we can, we can only do, we only need to do one cross product that way. It's a full three-dimensional cross product where these are all a bit simpler because two of the components are zero, so it sure makes the cross products easier. But uh, you should get the same thing either way. So you don't have to do this. All that says is that uh, if we have the sum of a bunch of cross products, it equals n. It's, they're all at the same place. They all have that common term Ra. We can do do that with it. It's, it's what that means is the resultant is the same effect as all the forces, which you knew anyway. That's always been the deal with the resultant. Oh, these are vectors. Okay, so either one. Either way to do it is, is fine. It's just uh, uh, whatever looks juicy to you uh, as your preference. Um, what I'll do, though, is give you the result of this. So you can check your cross product at home, but see, make sure you get the same thing because then we've got to talk about how to solve it. Because just doing the cross product doesn't actually solve it. So you should get, double check it, either way you do it, you should get this. Let me make sure I've got the forces in the same direction. I mean the uh, reactions. Hey, why is that? Okay. Yeah, I think there's going to be a minus on here. I think I actually had a x and a y in different directions. Um, well, it doesn't matter. They don't come into this direction. Only the tensions do. Minus 0.4 TBB J. And then there's a K component. Zero. Six TBD minus 100. That's actually the half, uh, half the 100 right there. K. And units all. When you do the cross products, whether you do the three individually and add them up, or add the forces and then do one cross product, either way you should get just that. Which kind, kind of sucks. We've got two unknowns and only one equation. 
and we used all our equations. We used the three force equations. We used the the well the moment equation in three dimensions. What do we do?
so realize that each of the components must also equal zero. We can't have anything left over. We can't have even a little bit here negated by a little bit here. Why not? They're entirely different directions. It's the I direction, that's the K direction. And they can't cancel each other. So we need all three of those to be zero for the entire thing to be zero for the sum of the moments to be zero. What? And then it's your option whether you want to do that or not. It's entirely up to you. Just realize it's there. Sometimes it makes things better, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes by the time you find out it doesn't make things better, you waste as much time as if you just done it the first way. Anyway. Okay. Questions on that one before we start a new one? What, Miss Smith? Why are you smiling? I'm always smiling. Hey, that's true. We'll have to do something about it. There's our <laughs> challenge, everybody. <laughs> See if we can get it to stop smiling. Let's see. What's really dear to her? Like, do you, you really love your car? Can we mess that up? No, I don't care about that. What? No, it's already there. All right. So here's 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 a problem du jour. So here's a here's a long wall, and it's uh, twelve meters high. So it's actually the uh, back wall of my garage. Twelve meters. <laughs> The, uh, the groundskeeper's garage, actually. It's where I put my lawn tractor. <laughs> so, there it is. And uh, what we're going to do is, to, to help out, I'll tell you where we'll put the uh, axes already, because then some stuff happens right there. So a little bit off-center. We'll put the axes, and that's going to be Eight meters on one side. Well, maybe that's too much off center. So, eight meters on one side, ten meters on the other. Yeah, that's not my real garage, that's the little one. Okay, this is going to test our, test our drawings. Okay. And uh, we got X coming out, Y going up. And Z going over here. All right, got the picture so far? All right, because now, now here's where it gets a, a little bit more interesting. Uh, 1.2 meters out in front, so we'll just put a little point there, that's 1.2 meters out in front, and then 2 meters up from there, so that's 2 meters up, all these in uh, all these dimensions in meters. So we got the picture there, 1.2 out in front of the wall, two meters up. Right there, we have uh, a bucket. Is it floating? Yeah. <laughs> no, of course it's not floating. This is this is a class of, uh, of uh, equilibrium. Yeah, so, so we better... <laughs> Yeah, well, right now it's massless, but a cable runs from there back to the garage, from 
from there back to the garage. Still not yet in equilibrium, so uh, I've hired you to pull parallel to the x-axis with some force to hold it out there from the wall. The utility of this is obvious, so we're not going to go into that. <laughs> That's the problem. Everybody see it okay? So, maybe we had this bucket sitting down there at the base of the wall with the cables on it, and maybe they were slack, and you pull it out and you swing it out in front of the wall a little bit. So that it's still right over the x-axis, you're pulling right along the x-axis. That's the only way to pull. And uh, we need to find those forces, of course. The bucket itself has a mass. It's not masses. No. BJ's is. Mine's not. 200 kilograms. Is that a lot or a little? Is that like the one mother-in-law or two? Huh? That's what I call my mother-in-law. Hey, you little hefty bucket. <laughs> but not right before either Christmas or my birthday. But, you know, kind of out somewhere else around the college. <laughs> Sorry, Nana, just kidding. Oh dear, I'm going to get phone calls on that one. Alright, uh, we got all the pieces. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll label the points for reference. This makes it a little bit easier. So, buckets A, B, C, and the, the force you're pulling with is P. P, P for pull. I get it. Alright, want to find the that force. We only need the magnitude. We already know the direction. You're pulling along the x-axis. Uh, but for the other two forces, whatever we might want to call them, I was a little simpler with this. We'll call FB and FC. The forces in the cables going to those points. We don't need to see they say they F A B because where else could it go? All right. Obviously, P has to be big enough, or it won't be in equilibrium. Oh, I think we're done now. So that'll be that'll be uh, yeah, we are. So that'll be Wednesday's problem. That's why Alan was packing up. Thought I wanted to hurry to get out there and do something.